Next on the Pray in Jesus Name show, Dr. Chaps will pray about these important issues. A New York judge throws out an atheist lawsuit against the 9-11 cross. Medicaid may begin to pay for sex change surgeries. The Starbucks CEO says Christians should boycott. And did you know less Bible reading causes a decline in morals? Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps with the Pray in Jesus' Name show, the fastest half hour on Christian television, and we're gonna do three things. We're gonna report the news, discern the spirits, and pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready? Let's pray together. Our first story comes to us from The Blaze. On the Good Friday before Easter, a New York judge sided with people who believe that the steel cross that was formed when the World Trade Center buildings collapsed on, collapsed on September 11, 2001, should be included in the 9-11 Memorial and Museum. But Americans atheists, a secular group committed to church state separatism, has long sought for the presence of the symbol that is being included in an effort that remembers the lives lost during our nation's most horrific terrorist attack. The New York judge threw out the atheist group complaint, which argued that the cross was a violation of their rights and that it should not be present in the museum. In an attempt to have it nixed from the exhibition, they waged the lawsuit last July against New Jersey, New York, and Mayor Michael Bloomberg and New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. That's according to CNN. A lawyer for the 9-11 Memorial and Museum now called the judge's decision to throw out the lawsuit one that was gratifying to the museum's organizers. But atheist activist David Silverman, who was recently compared to the devil by comedian Stephen Colbert, notice the beard, is obviously less than content with this new decision. He vowed to fight against the cross's presence. We are angry that we have to fight this, he told CNN, arguing that the cross was installed for religious purposes and that it shouldn't be considered as part of a secular inclusion in the museum. We are confident that we will eventually win this case and the cross will be removed or atheists will be allowed to have our own symbol in there. In the official complaint, atheists argued the 9-11 cross caused them physical and emotional pain. Isn't that interesting? That's the news. Now let's discern the spirits a little bit. What is this spirit inside of the atheist complainer who is causing him revulsions and causing him physical or emotional pain when he sees the cross of Jesus Christ? Could it be the same demonic spirit, Satan himself, who was defeated by the cross when Jesus died for the forgiveness of our sins? You know, it's funny to me that when Satan lost that battle, when he crucified Jesus Christ and then God vindicated the innocent Christ by raising him from the dead, it made Satan so angry. He thought he had a victory when he killed Jesus, but Satan was defeated when God raised Jesus from the dead and forgives our sins and makes a way for us to be right with God and to be restored and to be forgiven of our sins. Oh, how that made the devil angry. So much so that now 2000 years later, every time the devil sees a Christian cross, it makes him wanna vomit. Well, if the devil is inside of this atheist complainer, then guess what the atheist complainer is gonna feel like? He's gonna feel this revulsion, this uh, physical hatred, this emotional distress and pain. But you know what, David, God bless you in Jesus' name. We didn't cause that. It's the devil inside of you who's causing that. And if you would just renounce your sins and invite Jesus to forgive your sins, then Jesus would get that physical discomfort out of your heart. He'd get the devil out of your heart and you would be free to have peace Every time you look at a cross, you would worship the risen Christ. And what does the scripture say? Here's uh, a scripture from 1 Corinthians 1. We preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Gentiles foolishness. You know what? The cross of Jesus Christ can forgive your sins, even if you are an atheist complainer. But 
you've got to repent and invite Jesus to forgive your sins. Would you pray with me? Let's pray for the atheists who have filed this lawsuit. Father in heaven, we pray that the cross of Jesus Christ would become not just a stumbling block, not just an offense, not just foolishness to the Gentiles or uh, whatever is going on in their mind, Father, that would hate and become an enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ. We pray you would forgive that sin and move into them, comfort them by the Holy Spirit and bring them to conversion. So when they invite the Spirit of Jesus Christ to come in and evict the devil, that the Holy Spirit will overpower and convict and heal their broken heart. Father, we don't want anyone to be uncomfortable and that's why we want the devil out of them and Jesus into them in Jesus' name so they will find true peace with God. Amen and amen. All right, let's take a short break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about Medicaid now being used to fund transgender surgery. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Want your voice heard by multiple congressmen? At FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Chaps. We're on the Pray in Jesus' Name show where we report the news, discern the spirits, and pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Our next story is reported from CNS News. Medicare and Medicaid do not pay for sex change surgeries, but that may change. In response to a formal request from a transsexual woman, is she a man or is she a woman? Good question. The Federal Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services announced on March 28th that they have launched a formal reconsideration of their current refusal to cover surgical treatment for gender identity disorder. So wait, if you're confused about your gender, the treatment is surgery? I think the treatment should be mental health counseling. But an initial 30 day public comment period began last Thursday and now we need to comment. So when the note was posted, uh, CMS says it will consider all public comments and it is particularly interested in clinical studies and other scientific information re pertaining to transsexual surgery. Well, here's an example of somebody who's sort of the poster child now, the face of this transsexual surgery, Chastity Bono, the son of, excuse me, the, the daughter of Sonny and Cher Bono. Uh, and now if Medicare begins to pay with health insurance for uh, usually pays for elderly or disabled people, but if it's now funded by the payroll taxes of general revenues, they will begin to fund gender reassignment surgeries for people like Chastity Bono. Uh, she is reportedly seeking this kind of surgery. She wants to have a penile construction surgery. Now this is a woman who wants to become a man and radio talk show host Rush Limbaugh jokingly refers to this as the adedictomy or redactedictomy surgery. But, now think about that for a minute. But now Chastity remains a female from the waist down. For, for the moment, she is still a female and she wants to have this surgery. If Medicaid starts using your taxpayer dollars to reassign genders, people like Chastity will send you the bill for their own exercise in confusion and self-mutilation. So that's the news. Let's discern the spirits for a moment. Here is, God bless this, the people like Chastity Bono who are born as a woman and at some point in their life, they're either recruited or they voluntarily choose to sin 
by embracing a sexual disorder or homosexual lifestyle or whatever confusion enters their mind when the demonic spirit moves into them and causes them to think, I'm not really a woman, I'm a man. Now, not only is that a spirit of confusion, but it's a demonic spirit of self mutilation. When they want to you know, have these surgeries now to uh, self mutilate and whatever, maybe they have a right to that. I don't know that they do in God's eyes, but legally in America, does that mean the taxpayers have to begin to fund that? Now the Obama administration is actually considering using your tax dollars to pay these people, not to get help for their confusion, not to get spiritual treatment or exorcism, which they need to get the devil out of them, but instead to mutilate their bodies to conform to what the devil wants them to think. We should not be empowering this demonic spirit to help them self mutilate. We should be providing them counseling and addiction recovery and even Christian counseling and exorcism. Give them true freedom because what did Jesus say in Matthew 19, here's a scripture and here's what the Holy Spirit would say about this. Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? You know, God is not confused about your gender. In Leviticus 18, it also says, you shall not lie with mankind as with womankind is an abomination and don't lie down with any beast, it is confusion. So this abomination and this confusion is now entering our government who's gonna begin paying people who are confused about their gender identity. I think we need to pray about this and we need to weigh in, visit PrayInJesusName.org and we'll have a link to that uh, site where you can post your comments for the government decision. Let's pray about this. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus name that the government policy will not change, that Medicaid will not begin to fund gender reassignment surgery, that the government will not support the demonic, but will instead provide true health care and healing for these people who are confused in their minds about what God made them to be. Father, we know you are not confused. You made them male or female. And God, I pray that you would bless people like Chastity Bono and people who have that gender identity disorder, bless them with truth and deliverance for their mind in Jesus' name, amen. All right, we take a short break. When we come back, the CEO of Starbucks says that Christians ought to stop buying their coffee. Why? Thank you for joining us in prayer. Stay tuned for valuable info about partnering with Dr. Chaps. Hi, this is Chaplain Klingenschmidt. I wanna thank you for participating and watching this important message today about defending religious liberty. If there's anything our message proves is that we can make a difference. If we will rise up together as the Church of Jesus Christ, we do not need to be ashamed of the name of Jesus. I need you to participate today in one of four ways. Please visit our website at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign our free petitions to defend religious liberty. Number two, I need you to call us at 866-Obey-God and we, you can sign what they call a fax petition. You don't have to know how to operate a fax machine, but for a nominal fee, we will fax your petition to all 100 senators or all 535 congressmen to defend the right to pray in Jesus' name. Number three, please purchase our DVDs and CDs with important teachings about defending religious liberty around the country. And number four, please donate. These rallies cost us thousands of dollars and we need your donations to stay on the air. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and do what you can to help. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. Listen, you saw that commercial just now offering the DVD on our website but I have a special deal. Because you've tuned in at this moment of this television show, I'm gonna give it to you for free. All I want you to do, I just wanna see if anyone out there is watching the show. So I want you to call our toll-free number, 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-Obey-God. And if you call toll-free, it will ring to my cell phone, leave your phone number, I'll call you back, get your address, and we will give you a free copy of the DVD. So please, uh, call us today, we'll give you a free copy, we'll mail it to your house, no charge, and that's my way of saying thank you for watching the show today. Our next story comes to us from America's Conservative News. Starbucks CEO calls for a boycott of Starbucks. 
In a stunning development, Howard Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks, effectively joined the National Organization for Marriage's boycott against Starbucks. When asked by a stockholder to back, that he backtrack from his full-throated support of the radical homosexual agenda, Schultz responded, it's a free country. You can sell your shares in Starbucks and buy shares in another company. Thank you very much. Some corporate executives respond to boycotts by either caving into them or hiding behind their desks until the boycott blows over or simply standing firm to their core convictions in a firm yet polite manner. But Schultz didn't do any of these things. Instead, he appeared to be upping the ante and he's now taking the unprecedented step of dictating to his customers and stockholders that if they don't like his views about homosexual marriage, they should take their money elsewhere. The Blaze reports, Schultz could have responded to these indictments with platitudes or simply addressed it in the least offensive way possible. This, however, he did not do. Rather, he launched into a full-throated defense of the homosexual agenda. He's essentially saying that if you don't care for our views, Starbucks views on homosexual marriage, then don't buy our stock, don't buy our coffee. You know, out of respect, people might actually consider taking Schultz at his word and doing as he wishes. The number of, the phone number now to Starbucks corporate offices, by the way, is 800-235-2883. And if you are so inclined, please call them today. Call Starbucks at 800-235-2883 and call them to let them know that out of respect for Mr. Schultz's wishes, you will no longer be purchasing Starbucks coffee or buying stock in their corporation. We have a petition you can sign at PrayInJesusName.org. It's free, and we are boycotting Starbucks until they reverse their position on this. Let's discern the spirits for a moment. I think there's something inside of this corporate CEO who's saying, we hate traditional marriage so much that we don't want to be part of the the Christian society. We don't want you as coffee drinkers in our stores. Well, that's interesting because it sort of reflects what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17, the Holy Spirit would say this, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. Do you know God might actually increase your blessing and receive you if you come out from among them and be separate? Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name for the CEO of Starbucks and all these other people who are promoting the homosexual agenda so radically. Father, we pray you would forgive their sins and bring them to sanity. Bring them back to a right relationship with Almighty God. And then we'll return to their stores and start buying their coffee again. But until that happens, Father, we pray that people would rise up in protest and boycott Starbucks and stop them from funding the homosexual agenda, not only with their stockholders, but with their coffee sales. We pray this victory against sin in Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's take a short break. When we come back, in our last segment, we're gonna talk about a poll that shows American morality is declining as Bible reading declines. Hi, I'm Chaplain Klingenschmidt. I wanna make available to you a very powerful teaching series that we put together just for you. This four hour DVD has an amazing amount of information and this 90 minute audio version on CD is a condensed version. You can have either one just by visiting our website at PrayInJesusName.org or calling us toll free at 866-Obey-God. In the first hour, we will tell you all about the revival that I saw at the Air Force Academy. In the second hour, we'll teach you about the importance of prayer and fasting and sanctification for this spiritual battle that we're all in. In the third hour, we'll tell you about the ministry of deliverance and even the miracles and exorcism stories that I saw when I was a Navy chaplain. In the fourth hour, we'll tell you about standing up for religious liberty, how I took a stand and faced my own court martial, how we won the victory in Congress, 300,000 petition signers. Please visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or call us right now, toll free at 866-Obey-God. These are important products for you and your church. God bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you in Jesus' name, I'm Dr. Chaps. I just wanna say, on on that commercial break, my producer said he thinks I'm crazy for giving away free copies of this DVD. 
You can usually buy this on our website for $30, but today it's yours for free if you just call me at 866-Obey-God. Make that phone call today, pick up the phone. I wanna know that you're watching. This far into the program, you need to be rewarded. Please call us at 866-Obey-God and I'll give you a free copy of that DVD with my testimony. Our next story comes to us from Charisma News. A poll shows the failing to read the Bible is causing a moral decline across the United States. A new report released Tuesday finds that Americans overwhelmingly believe that morals and values are declining in the United States, 77%. The most cited cause for this lack of morals and this decline is a lack of Bible reading. The findings are reported in the American Bible Society's annual State of the Bible Survey, which was released Tuesday. The report details Americans' beliefs about the Bible, its role in society, its presence in U.S. homes and more, and the survey found that the Bible remains a highly valued, influential force in America. Yet beliefs about the Bible are becoming increasingly polarized, particularly when data is examined by age group. One in six people report buying a copy of the Bible in the last year. 80% of Americans identify the Bible as sacred. Americans have plenty of copies at their fingertips, an average of 4.4 Bibles per household, and 56% of Americans believe the Bible should have a greater role in society. But Bible reading and perceptions about the Bible have become increasingly polarized. Now with 6 million new Bible antagonists identifying themselves in the last year alone. More than half, 57% of young people ages 18 to 28 report reading their Bible less than three times a year or never. And 69%, however, say that their faith influences their views on political issues. Isn't that interesting now? Almost 70% of Americans think that faith influences politics and their particular perception of political issues. That's why the Bible is critical to establishing the kingdom of God and winning political victories. Listen, I, I make no bones about getting the church involved in politics and why? Because even if there is some kind of separation of church and state, it doesn't mean Christians can't vote. The constitution says you can't have a a uh, litmus test for elected office, so Christians can hold office. Christians can pass laws. Christians can vote their conscience, and we need to be able to do that. And when the Bible informs our morality, then we're stronger as a society because we keep the moral decline from destroying the country. I think this is so critical that we pray together. And here's a scripture that I wanna pray from 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16. I'm gonna read this and I want you to think about this for a moment. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. In other words, the Bible is valuable. It's profitable, it's useful, it's inspired and it's good for teaching. It's good for reproof or correction. It's good for training in righteousness. We need to have this mindset that uh, as, the culture divides and polarizes, and by the way, I predicted this in 1999 when I wrote my book, that in the end times, the church will become whiter and holier and the world will become blacker and more full of sin. As this polarization, polarization happens, we need to remember that the scriptures are inspired from God and that is how we discern the Holy Spirit. And yet these antagonists, these anti-Bible antagonists that are now coming out in the culture, they are inspired by the devil and sometimes they're filled with demonic entities and they reject the authority of scripture and they hate the name of Jesus. But God bless them anyway. Let's pray for them. Would you pray for me with me together? Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that you will restore Bible reading, especially to our young people. God, inspire them to pick up the Bible because the scriptures are inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. Father, I pray that as they read the scriptures, they will understand it, be inspired, and the Holy Spirit will move into their heart and rule their life, and even maybe their politics. God, help us to establish your kingdom, not our own kingdom. We don't want our own selfish views enabled as, as law, but we want your kingdom, the kingdom of God 
here on earth the same way that it already is happening in heaven. We pray this blessing on America that they will read their Bibles in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take our last break, and when we come back, we're going to preview tomorrow's show. Can I take a moment to ask you to donate today? There are such important battles that we're fighting and winning around the country to defend religious liberty. How much is the right to pray in Jesus' name worth to you? Well, to me, it was worth a 16-year career and a million-dollar pension, which I sacrificed to defend Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to call us today, toll free at 866-Obey-God and make a donation. How much would you pay to defend religious liberty? Would you give $10 or $20 or $100? I bet there's some people who are watching who can even give $1,000 today just to help us stay on the air, to broadcast this into people's homes, to organize these petition drives, and especially we spend thousands of dollars organizing rallies around the country and petitioning legislators. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and give the best pledge that you can give to defend religious liberty and take a stand for Jesus Christ. We can't do it without you. Please donate today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps with the Pray in Jesus' Name show, and we're going to preview tomorrow's show. Please. Tune in tomorrow, this same time, this same channel, and we're gonna talk about a pastor who says Jesus was wrong about homosexual marriage. President Obama's pastor also endorses gay marriage from the pulpit. A Kentucky passes a new law defending religious freedom, and a Saudi Arabia cleric wants to destroy all Christian churches in the region. These are important stories we'll be talking about tomorrow, but I pray also that you'll reach out to me this week and call that toll free number 866 Obey God and we're gonna give you a free copy of our DVD. This is a offer that I'm only offering on this show, uh, maybe, maybe even this week. If you call me anytime this week, I pray that you will pick up the phone and dial 866 Obey God. We don't want a donation, we just wanna know that you're out there. I pray God's blessing upon you. You can also visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and click the contact button, contact chaps and you'll see how to send me an email. Would you uh, pray with us again tomorrow? I pray that you'll join us every day. God bless you in Jesus' name. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his PhD in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.